I don't know what came first, nursing or being in the Army. My father was in the Army, and I saw my first Army nurse, I think when I was about seven, and I was just so taken with her, and I told my mother I wanted to be an Army nurse, and she said, all right, that's fine. I just thought about being a nurse all the time. And when I finished high school, I just went right into nurses' training. Where did you study nursing? A Union Memorial in Baltimore. It was the country club. <laughs> it was the nicest hospital. Tell me a little bit about the program. How long was it? It was for three years, and we really learned how to take care of patients, which I don't think nurses do nowadays. If you ask them, how about a mustard plaster? They wouldn't know what it was, I'm sure. What year did you graduate? 1944, just, yes, before the war was still on. Yeah, and we were still fighting in Europe. I went down to the recruiting office as soon as I passed my board, my, you know, Maryland State boards. And uh, they were very happy to see me and said, yes, where would you like to go? And I said, Walter Reed. And so they sent me off to Walter Reed. What was your commitment till the end of the war? To, for a certain number of years, do you recall? No, I don't, because I was just going to be an army nurse. It was forever, as far as I was concerned. <laughs> that was my aim in life. Well, I had to have a month's basic training, just like the men did, and I got 100% in it. No, I didn't. I got 99 because of that captain. He ruined my records. Did you learn to fire weapons? No, 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 no. One thing I learned, though, in my first month in basic, in basic training, and a young second lieutenant, he said, you know, the thing about nurses and us is that we're dispensable and you aren't. And I thought about that for a long time. And then I came to realize later it was absolutely true. They were always very, very careful about the nurses. I loved Walter Reed. I just absolutely loved it. Did you live on the grounds of the hospital? Oh, yes. We had a beautiful home. We had a tennis court, and the, and the club was just down around the corner, so we could go swimming whenever we wanted to. The most memorable thing about Walter Reed is that it was night duty. We had one solid month, and it was for 12 hours. We went on duty at 7 at night and went off at 7 in the morning. No time off, no days off until the very end. And then we had a weekend, a weekend off after that month. But I had it in April. And it was just absolutely gorgeous at Walter Reed because the daffodils were blooming one morning and the next morning it was the weeping cherry and the next morning it seemed to be something else. I could always when I was walking back to the quarters, see something that was beautiful, you know, made my heart sing. <laughs> I was so glad to be there. But then I decided I'd really like to go overseas. So then she said, if you want to go, and so she gave me my orders to go, and I went out to California. I'd never been to California, and I was so impressed with the palm trees and lovely and made two lifelong friends, actually. Then um, we went to uh, the Philippines. They, we had trouble finding a place for us because they knew that we were going to be sent up to Tokyo as soon as the war was over. But what to do with us till then? Well, I ended up teaching tennis at one point, <laughs> which was lots of fun, and uh, other things. And finally, they did find a hospital for us up in Lingayen Gulf. It was a wonderful place for our troops to lend supplies and things. And there was a real battle up there with the Japanese, but we won. Moved the Japanese out, well, out into bergs, places where they had many, many snipers. And that's what we were treating, men who were being shot at by the Japanese. And How close really did you personally come to the front lines? At the supply depot, right. the hospital was a part of the overall. It was close to the, where the snipers were having fun with us, but it wasn't, we weren't 
We weren't dodging bullets or anything okay. like that. They would never let nurses do that ever, ever in our day. Very few numbers you could count on your fingers, nurses who were killed during the World War II others. Were you part of an Army hospital or did you treat Army, Navy, Marines, whoever was there? Mostly Army because it was such a big depot. There would be only Army up okay. there. But we did treat civilians when they came in. I remember the first time I went into my, well, <laughs> the ward was a big tent. I went into the big tent and the men were sort of standing and questioned me as soon as I got there. They said, what's she doing here? And I said, what do you mean? <laughs> and so I moved the screen and there was a Filipina and she was a lavandera, which is a washerwoman. And she was ironing and didn't see a bullet that was in the old fashioned iron that you put the coal in, you know, and it exploded and it hit her in the face somewhere. And uh, they treated her and then sent her off to Filipino hospital. Uh, but that happened every once in a while. We'd have, a, and it was usually the lavanderas and the bullets. And this is in the Philippines okay. up at that supply depot. So we were up there for quite a while and then we heard the war was over, but we were still working up there because snipers were still busy in the mountains. How long were you in the Philippines? It was a matter of months till the end of the war. Then one night, they woke us all up and said, get your gear, you're going up to Tokyo in the middle of the night. And we climbed aboard and, and the sergeant said, make yourself comfortable. And so I know I was lying on the floor in the middle. Some people had seats, you know, and they weren't bucket seats. We were better on the floor. and uh, But we all curled up and went to sleep, wondering what we were doing and what, what was happening next. And then in the morning, we landed in Okinawa and uh, had breakfast and then got back on the plane and went up to Yokohama. It was all bombed out. It was really pretty sad. And you know, the, the houses were made of just wood and they didn't have a lot of insulation between them. You know, they were re responsible. It was the military that were really responsible. So were you assigned to a hospital mm -hmm. there? Tokyo. Tokyo was a um, hospital that had been built in 1923, and uh, it was by the Orpiscopalia, and it was St. Luke's. Beautiful hospital. And there was a chapel in the center of it that was five stories high, and that meaning that Every story had a balcony that overlooked the chapel itself. And the men could come out, if they were able to, on the balconies on every floor and attend church services. So it was really lovely. And we had a couple of uh, Japanese nurses who just turned out to be such good friends and they tried so hard. How did you deal with the language? <laughs> I just couldn't. I studied at the University of California for a whole semester. I could say, this is the book. And where is the book? Well, I could say, tomorrow we are going to Yokohama. But that's why I married my husband. Because he came in, and I remembered him from the Philippines, and he had his appendix out. And in those days, the men had to stay in the hospital for a month, or however it took, before they could go back on active duty. He was on the ward for a long time. And um, after a while, he could go out for a walk, but he had to have a nurse with him, and that was me. <laughs> and so I went with him and found he was delightful because if we got lost or he wanted to go someplace, he could just ask, and he could. his Japanese was wonderful. He went to the uh, military uh, language school in, in uh, Michigan. What was his work in Japan? to translate. Well, yeah. he was a good resource for you then. Oh, yes, he was. So and you were there with the Army of Occupation? Yes. And how long were you in Japan? Ultimately, I got, we got married, and I do have a picture of us in the, looking down from one of the balconies that Donald had to put in for another year to stay there so we could have a house to live in.
It was a rule, two years. And then, then we began to get soldiers from Korea. And the big problem there was they were sent to us because we had a burn center in our hospital. And it, they were having so many fires in their barracks in Korea. They were just wooden barracks and they had wooden uh, wood burning stoves and they would catch fire during the night and so many men were burned terribly and oh you don't know pain until you've heard one of them having his dressings changed. So what was your level? I was a second lieutenant. Most of us were RN. After you were married, were you still in the army? No, we they, we weren't allowed. In the army as a no. nurse. So you had to leave? I just got it. Discharge. Discharge. Well, as you look back on your career during World War II, would you have done it again? Oh, yes, I would do it in a minute.